It's been a while since the creation of Atlas's third production team, Studio Zero. Six whole years, in fact. And all this time, they've been hard at work creating the game we now know as Metaphor Re-Fantasio. Initially known as Project Re-Fantasy, it remained shrouded in mystery for years, with only snippets of concept art and promotional videos. It's certainly a very Atlas-sounding title, and already it seems to be drawing parallels with the Persona series. The last Metaphor news we received was back in June, and we don't have a lot to go on. So do note that most of the information here will be speculatory in nature. With all that out of the way, here are the 8 things we know about Metaphor Re-Fantasio. 1. A Mirror to Reality In the opening moments of the Metaphor Re-Fantasio trailer, we are presented with a thought-provoking question against the backdrop of modern Tokyo. What if the world we live in is their utopia? This question carries layers of complexity, primarily revolving around the identities of we and they. Metaphor has been described as a fantasy world mirroring our reality, blurring the lines between the two. This leads to the intriguing possibility that we and they are interchangeable in this context. And yes, looks like we're delving into the philosophical. Now that's certainly a handful. Atlas games are often fraught with symbolism, complex narratives, and social issues. And by the looks of it, metaphor is no different. The name alone should be a dead giveaway. The trailer also offers a peek into the everyday lives of the people in this world, as they undergo a process involving the infusion of some form of magic into their minds. What's more, the clothing of some of the people in this scene suggests a connection to our real world, strengthening the fan theory that metaphor could be a form of isekai, a popular anime genre in Japan, where individuals from our world find themselves transported to a fantastical realm. 2. The Struggle for Power we also witness a scene where a group of people gather beneath the gaze of five prominent figures, announcing a significant proclamation. This proclamation states that whoever garners the highest faith among the people will ascend to the throne. Whether they hold positions of authority within a royal court system or occupy a high ranking within Metaphor's potential religious hierarchy could be anyone's guess. As it turns out, the kingdom is facing a crisis. The reigning king was recently assassinated. He and his heir are under a 10-year curse, and the direness of this situation compels these five figures to embark on a quest to anoint a new leader, one who can guide the kingdom towards stability and prosperity. I think it's more than likely that there will be multiple endings, where players might assume the mantle of the new king in one scenario while uncovering a means to lift the curse afflicting the prince in another, or even a third route that involves tearing down the government structure itself. 3. The Mystery of Humans the trailer hints at the mystery surrounding humans entering the world of Re-Fantasio and taking on unusual forms. The how and why of this phenomenon remains unknown. The trailer even features an onlooker spreading rumors about a human attacking a village, suggesting that a human's presence in Re-Fantasio may be met with skepticism or fear. Moreover, the question is that a human is posed in the promotional video, emphasizing the uniqueness and potential otherness of humans in this world. These clues lead to the theory that when humans enter the realm of Free Fantasio, some sort of spatial anomaly or transformation occurs, leading to their altered appearance and abilities. 4. A Diverse Cast of Characters Katsura Hashino, the game's creator, has expressed his intent to craft a story where individuals from different backgrounds come together and embark on a journey of self-discovery. Metaphor Refantasio introduces a fascinating mechanic known as archetypes, which plays a central role in the game. These archetypes are special powers bestowed upon the player characters, and they appear to draw inspiration from classic RPG class archetypes. Among them, we have classes like Seeker, Magic Seeker, Fighter, Knight, Thief, Swordmaster, Magic Knight, and more advanced sounding archetypes like Ninja, Paladin, Trickster, and Soul Hacker. Each of these archetypes seem to function akin to traditional RPG classes, complete with unique icons. These icons are prominently displayed in the game's academy, where players likely study archetypes and inherit new skills. As for the playable characters, the cast includes the traveling boy, our protagonist and seeker, who may not be completely human, suggesting that the game's setting distinguishes between human and man. This nuance is due to the presence of distinct humanoid races, each with its own identity. Just like in the Persona series, it looks like the main character will build bonds with others. These connections could play a role in progressing the storyline and boosting the abilities of their teammates. Oh, and there's actually a strong possibility that we'll have a voiced protagonist, which is a rarity in Atlas games. Another character of note is Strahl, a horned warrior who appears to have connections to royalty, possibly serving as an aid to the prince. This character's unique design hints at the introduction of new fantasy races unique to metaphor. Then there's Hulkenberg. She's an elf and assumes the role of a knight, which probably means she'll have defensively oriented abilities. 
The last known playable character is Heisme, a rabbit-looking creature with the Thief class. Essentially, this is Metaphor's answer to the mascot character trends seen in the Persona series. And of course, no Atlas game would be complete without a pixie character. Gallica, the pixie, appears to take on a significant role by supporting the main character. Finally, at the end of the trailer, a mysterious and important-looking figure with a cat is shown. For all we know, this individual may function as this game's version of Igor, an all-powerful observer who only serves to guide you toward the right path. 5. Turn-Based Combat Just like in Persona and Shin Megami Tensei games, Metaphor Re Fantasio will feature turn-based combat. Notably unique mechanics include a synthesis mechanic, allowing for team-up attacks where a resource may be consumed to perform actions in conjunction with another party member. This concept appears reminiscent of Digital Devil Saga's combo skills, offering strategic depth in battles. For instance, if two party members possess a Styrokuja, which is an attack buff if you're new to Atlas games, it seems that Synthesis might allow the transformation of this spell into Metarokuja, albeit at the cost of two turns. The term Synthesis might hold deeper meaning beyond just gameplay, echoing the philosophical concept of combining thesis and antithesis. In the context of metaphor, it could symbolize the synthesis of our world, thesis, and the fantasy realm, antithesis. Additionally, the trailer hints at a retry option, allowing players to rewind time within battles, which has pretty strong lore implications as well. Furthermore, Metaphor features a front and back row system, similar to classic RPGs like Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest. This system presents players with choices, as characters in the front row deal maximum melee damage, but are more susceptible to enemy attacks, while those in the back row deal reduced physical damage but enjoy greater protection. Post-battle rewards include currency, experience points, archetype experience, and the return of Magnetite, a familiar currency in Shin Megami Tensei games. 6. Exploration In the trailer, we see a young boy riding a sword as if it's a skateboard. No idea how that works, but faster transportation is always a plus. And the Gauntlet Runner, a hybrid sky and land vehicle, also offers another means of transportation. Additionally, we catch glimpses of the capital city, which boasts unconventional architectural designs, including a building with a futuristic appearance. This suggests that Metaphor's world may not be limited to medieval aesthetics, but may encompass high fantasy elements, blending the old and the new. Like I said earlier, Metaphor appears to be connected to the real world, and I guess this notion manifests in many peculiar ways. 7. The Passage of Time Throughout the trailer, we catch glimpses of a user interface that displays both time and date, hinting at a potential release time system within the game. It raises questions about the role of time in Metaphor's gameplay. Could missions have time constraints, adding a layer of urgency to the narrative? While this is largely speculative, it does align with the time system of past Persona games. 8. Platforms when Metaphor Re Fantasio was unveiled at the 2023 Xbox Games Showcase, it was confirmed for release on Xbox Series X, S, and PC. Thankfully, in the livestream announcement, they also revealed that Metaphor Re Fantasio would be available on both PS4 and PS5. It's worth mentioning that the trailer didn't provide details about whether the game would be included in Xbox Game Pass at launch. However, this situation could evolve as we get closer to an official release date a Switch release may even be a possibility in the future, as Persona 5 Royal was notably released on the Switch. So there you have it. The blend of fantasy and reality, the unique archetype system, and the enigmatic narrative have sparked fervent anticipation among players. However, with this anticipation comes a degree of skepticism. Some fans and critics have raised concerns about the game's marketing. I mean, come on, it's a very unusual name, and there's still a lot we don't know about it. But on the flip side, all the information points to this game essentially being a Persona game with a more medieval fantasy setting. Metaphor's potential to introduce players to the Atlas brand through the timeless appeal of a fantasy RPG is a smart move if you ask me. While Atlas has a rich history, it's been over two decades since the release of Shin Megami Tensei III Nocturne. The opportunity to create a fresh and engaging experience for both longtime fans and newcomers is significant. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments below. This is Arihead, signing out.